All right, today what we're going to be doing is putting a set of adapters on a 2003 Dodge Ram van, one ton, a 3500. This is a Road Trek Class B motorhome, and it has the standard suspension with the uh, original Dana rear end. We want to space out the two rear wheels to be even with the two front wheels. The front wheels. Starting off, make sure you got your vehicle secure on some flat, solid terrain. Front wheels, both sides, chocked front and rear. We're going to be working with this vehicle elevated at the rear end, and we'll be doing this without the emergency brake applied, so we want to make sure the vehicle is not going to be moving on us. Underneath the vehicle, I have placed my jack with a 4x4 underneath the shock support, use it as a, a jacking position, and then I've taken a uh, jack stand and placed it beside the jack and lowered the vehicle, lowered the wheel back down onto that jack stand. Next step will be removing the, uh, the wheels itself. These wheels are aftermarket wheels which were purchased at Summit. Uh, mail order company here just uh, south of Atlanta and uh, what I've done is replaced the original wheels which were lighter duty and more narrow with these which are a little bit wider and a little bit stronger than the original equipment. I've used, retained the uh, original center hubs and on these I have, re uh, have purchased just recently from Amazon a set of the 16-inch uh, beauty rings to go on these 16-inch uh, uh, rims. You can see this is an eight lug pattern and uh, that is the original Dana uh, limited slip rear that was underneath this vehicle from the factory. On the van I had replaced uh, these wheels about a year and a half, two years ago from the original factory ones. Uh, I went with the solid black, it's kind of a flat black, and uh, they're wider and uh, they give the vehicle a little bit better stance and it handles better when I use the two inch spacers. The two inch spacers that are on here are some cheap Chinese stuff that I ordered on the internet back when I bought these wheels and uh, for the purpose of this video. I'm going to be replacing those with the Bora, that's B-O-R-A, uh, two inch wheel spacers. And uh, it's a spacer, wheel adapter, whatever you want to call it. And they are US made uh, out of uh, Reno, Nevada. These can be purchased off of Amazon and they can be purchased in any assortment of widths, bolt patterns, uh, whatever your application may be. They're already popped loose. I'm just going to go ahead and use my, my impact uh, tool to go ahead and remove all eight of these. Okay, I've got all eight lug nuts removed. And the way I usually do this is I use my feet. I've got the vehicle supported by the jack and a jack stand, both uh, there for my safety. And I, I just slide this off onto my feet and then I can pick the tire up and move it out of position. Alright, you've got the adapter off. Now's a good time to do a, a quick inspection of your of your brake shoes. Uh, on, on this application it is drum brakes in the rear. Uh, some of them, uh, different models, had disc brakes in the rear. Uh, depending on your application, whether you're uh, doing a 2500, 3500 uh, Mopar or you know a 2500 Chevrolet, uh, they will be basically the same. But uh, this is a good opportunity to, to, if you can pop your hub loose, and this is where you do not want the emergency brake connected. Be a good time to slide your your drum off and do an inspection of your brake shoes. All right, a good suggestion at this point is to make sure that your the face of the brake drum where the uh, spacer is going to seat and the part of the uh, hub itself is, is 
clean and clear of any any major deposits of either rust or crud. Make sure also the little retaining clips that come from the factory that slip over the, the studs here to hold the, the drum in place are removed because that will space, that will make your spacer not flush against this hub when you reinstall it. Okay, on my new bore adapters, as you can see, I opted to go with the aluminum instead of having the black anodized finish. Uh, and consequently, uh, the studs are a little bit longer than what I needed uh, if I wanted to use my original hubcaps. So I had to trim them down. What I needed to do was to go from, this is a two inch stud from above the base, and I needed to go to like one, uh, 1.4 inches above the base. I did a test fit in my wheel with this hub and made sure I knew where I needed to trim these off and then I marked them uh, with a permanent magic marker uh, and so I would know where to cut when I back my nut off. The, the, the nuts need to be on here when you cut it because it will tend to booger up the threads a little bit depending on what you use to cut the, the studs off with and consequently if you booger the threads up a little bit you'll never be able to get the nut on. By having the nut already on there you can back the nut off it will dress up the threads to a pretty good degree and then you can take your other grinding wheel I'll show you in a minute what I use and you can uh, you know clean this up dress it up get it fairly flat and then I use the Dremel to work the corner to give it a nice I'm, I'm a little anal I wanted it to you know be able to thread the, uh, the actual lug nuts on real easy so uh, this is this is where I've gone now the way I cut these is I take my my hub I got a four by this this center hub is a little over four inches uh, and what I did is I took a four by four piece of lumber. I kind of tapered the corners a little bit so I can get this to slide on. And then I can just give it a little bump and it's there. And now I've got a nice secure working surface to work with my grinding tool. And what I used here is my end grinder. And you can see the size wheel I use. And of course, uh, I will use this nut as a guide to how deep I want to cut and as I start cutting I leave a little bit of extra space between the face of the nut and my grinding wheel so when I cut into it it will be a little bit of a protrusion of, uh, of a thread or two and that gives me room to dress this up with my other tool my grinding tool with a fairly coarse uh, sanding disc and then after I get it sanded down and finished I'll back this off and then I take my Dremel and I just work the edges work the corners just to get it a nice clean taper so you have no difficulty at all threading on your lug nuts it's it's easy to cross thread these uh, when you're putting them on so you want to have them nice and flat and easy to thread on. All right, what I'm gonna do is back this nut off of the stud. And you can see there's some resistance because the threads are slightly uh, boogered up from uh, cutting it with a wheel. But uh, what I'll do now is take my Dremel and I'm going to dress this corner right around here. You can see the burr sticking up from it when I back the nut on it. All right, now that I've got the, uh, the edge nice and smooth on there, you can see that my lug nut will easily thread right back on. And I don't have any problems with it getting cross-threaded as I install my wheel. This new Bora adapter, they are machined so close 
on their tolerances that on this particular hub I had to literally go around the edge with my sanding disc and smooth out some of the rough edges and knock off some of the, the thick uh, caked on paint that was put on from the factory and uh, after I got that smoothed down then I, I went over it with some some I think this is 80 grit and and got it relatively smooth then I shot it with some rust-oleum uh, semi-gloss black and this will probably skin up some of it as I put it back on but it will protect the majority of the surface that I roughed up with my sandpaper and you can see that is one close tolerance right there and then of course the company also furnishes you with your lug nuts that you will use and something to mention at this point this is a two inch thick adapter I wanted my wheel to come out two inches if you use like a one inch adapter your original studs on your axle are probably going to stick out past the face here which will cause it to interfere with the back of your wheel when you put your wheel on that stud if it's protruding you're not going to get a good a good mating surface and then you're going to wind up with a problem and probably shear off a wheel or some studs maybe have a catastrophic event as a result first as I hand tighten these I want to make sure that this spacer is centered exactly on top of these lug nuts and on the center of the hub and I tighten all eight of them by hand first prior to going back with my torque wrench and then I torque them down in increments starting out at about 50 to 70 pounds and then I go up to a hundred and 90 to a hundred and then I top it off at about 120 to 130 all right as you tighten up the uh, lug nuts as you go to tighten them you should always go opposite end if I start here my next lug nut that I will tighten up and I'm just going slightly you know with a wrench a little bit okay I started here went went here I'm gonna go here go here and so on until you get all eight just snug all right if you're as anal as I am you know I've, I've gone out and bought a, a real good heavy-duty torque wrench uh, from Home Depot it's Husky brand uh, but I'm gonna start out at about 50 pounds and when you hear it click on this particular wrench you've reached that setting Once you hear the click, you stop applying your pressure. Uh, I went ahead and went to 130. Uh, that's my final torque on the adapters to the actual hub. A suggestion. In your toolbox that you're going to be carrying in your vehicle, remember that you may have to at some point pull your spacer off and you won't be at your house where you've got your garage and tools. I would suggest in your toolbox you keep the socket that will appropriately fit the nuts, the lug nuts that hold the spacer to your hub, and the, the socket that will fit your lug nuts that hold your actual wheel on to the spacer. All right, one of the reasons that I cut down the studs, they were two inch studs, I cut them down to 1.4 inches. That's so I could use my factory hubcap. And they were so long that they literally bottomed out here at two inches. So at 1.4 inches, those snap onto place and they're there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.